Hey everyone, so we're finally going to put the workshop to use. I'm going to start processing the timber for my workbench that I need to build the doors. Uh, it's going to get in the way um, because we haven't finished plastering or done the floor yet, but um, it doesn't matter. I'll just move them out of the way when we come to do the floor. So I've got all this reclaimed timber that I sourced from uh, a couple of years ago from a building that was being torn down. And uh, we're going to turn it into a big workbench. Okay, let's get these old tools running off the three-phase converter and uh, process all the timber. Okay, that's all of our wood for the workbench, planed on all sides and then squared off on the table saw. It took me all day, but you know, that's a lot of money's worth of wood there. And you know, I had to denail it and everything. I think I got about two days' work in that, but you know, it would have cost me a lot to buy that. And it, and it uses something again. Bought myself a uh, Christmas present for the workshop. Been wanting one of these for a long time. I'm just gonna get all the legs cut to length. And then we can uh, start gluing up some sides. Morning everyone, carry on with this. I'm going to do a glue up today, get the legs done hopefully, or the sides done. Now uh, I just want to say this isn't my design, I'm going to take credit for it, copying the design, well for the most part anyway, from a YouTube video I saw, I'll link to it in the description. It's a very nice big solid heavy workbench, my sort of style, and it used scrap wood. I was originally going to um, make a bench sort of all timber framing style with mortise and tenons and everything uh, but I didn't really have the right wood for doing it like that and I had all this scrap wood and I saw this uh, saw this video that I'll link to and uh, very impressed with how, how well it turned out and how cheap it could be and uh, how it utilised the uh, scrap wood that I had available I recovered from uh, friends um, extension being taken down so I decided I'd go with that, that design and copy it a bit changing it a little bit just to suit the tools and things that I've got and uh, my needs a little bit more get these pocket holes done I'm not a big fan of these but they serve a purpose sometimes all right so that's that done so uh, now we take a long piece which goes over that and that essentially makes um, it a tenon that, that becomes like a tenon because that gets sandwiched between the other pieces Right, those two pieces are screwed in. Now we put the piece between there and there. A lot of glue in this build. So in the video, the guy uh, guy notes the spaces these screws evenly throughout the same throughout the build. I'm going to do the same thing just so I know I can drill through here if I want for like dog holes and that. So anyway, now we've put in another piece along here and that makes that middle piece like a tenon. It'll be very strong. Right, and then we just put in a piece between here and that makes our legs three pieces thick laminate it together so it'd be nice and stable and, uh, and it essentially puts a tenon between those two 
Okay, there's one down, one side down, we'll make another one. Good morning everyone, so it's the next day. I've got this, uh, the two sides done, glued up and dried, and now they are sitting leveled on the floor that isn't leveled. I've just put them on bits of wood and stuff to keep them level. I'm gonna screw a couple more bits of wood across the legs just to keep it all square. And then we're gonna glue up, resting the beams on these these bits of wood as we go. And that is gonna be the size and location of uh, the outfeed table and workbench. Just uh, squaring this up, all its corner, making it level. Level to our reference point anyway, not level to the floor. Stuff like this is much easier. That is actually perfect. Yeah, stuff like this is much easier when you've got a level floor, but I haven't got one. Anyway, yeah, I think we're ready to start, uh, start laminating. Okay, so successful day. I'm going to call that a day there. Still got these ones to do. But it's hard to get in there now, so I'm going to have to figure something out for them. But yeah, it's all coming along well. Um, I've got a tiny bit of a bow, bit of discrepancy in it, so I'm going to have to do a tiny bit of plane in on one of them, but nothing too serious. And yeah, it's coming along well. So I'm going to carry on tomorrow, and uh, we'll get it finished. And we enter into the Hobbity Kingdom. Dark, gloomy day today. But we'll work on this. Now, in the video that I'm copying, Guy had the same issue. He ended up with a slight bow in the middle. Um, can you see that there? It's about two mil, something like that. It's not bad. Um, in the video, the guy um, uh, table sawed it off, he made a jig, but I'm just gonna plane it. I got that nice long plane there, and I'm gonna uh, just plane off that couple of mil, and then that should sit straight in there. So let's do that now. Doing the test fit, make sure these last pieces are going to go in. And that's my last bit, and that'll go in, that'll hammer in. And they're going to squeeze up tight. Yeah, pleased. I think that's going to work well. Okay, we're all glued up. Um, for the last pieces, I um, stuffed them in there, loads of glue, ratchet strapped, and then we got a uh, fairly long screws going through so we just need some drying time now and uh, let's do a fair bit of flattening so uh, while that's doing its thing I'm going to use the time to uh, process some materials what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a vise here on this left corner um, it would be nice to put it that in but I want uh, a clear run for the source if I'm doing something in the vise I want to be able to source something in the vise not get in the way so I'm going to put a vise here now I'm going to put tail vise up here, so I'm just going to process the uh, materials. I've got these old uh, offcuts of sleeper, and I'm going to use these as a uh, tail vise with this vise here. Yeah, process the materials. Right, here's my two, this will be my uh, tail vise bits of wood and this will be the uh, side vise, whatever you call it. Yeah, show you a bit of wood I got to cut them from. You're walking along the road and you see one of these or in an old builder's yard or whatever and you think toxic old railway sleeper. Wrong. Inside some of these old sleepers is this beautiful exotic hardwood. And uh, one of these sleepers costs 30 quid. You've got hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of, uh, worth of beautiful exotic hardwood in there. Just going to turn myself down some, uh, some dowels. Done one already. Just going to do them for, to make some dogs for the bench. For the end vice, tail vice.
made some dogs last night on the lathe. I uh, showed you a bit of lathe clips, but uh, made three for the tail vise. They will go in the end of the vise, and then I made two uh, to go in the bench. Quite simple, just a slightly shallow little notch in them, made out of that same nice hardwood. They're a bit damp still, the wood, so I've oversized them a bit because I'm expecting them to uh, shrink a little bit. We're going to get this uh, bench flattened off. So I've got my nice big long, uh, what is it, record number seven, plane, beast. And we're going to flatten this off, just put these two, uh, these bits of our window frame. Oh, hang on, let's move that plane out of the way. Just uh, two straight reference points. We look down them. And as you can see, it's actually not really got any twist in it, which is good. Or very little twist, but there is a bit of a bow in the middle. So I'm just going to go along, just flattening it generally by eye, just getting down to all the low spots. And then we'll, uh, then we'll start fine-tuning it, getting it nice and flat. Let's do it. I'm just going to go over the whole thing and just take all the high spots. like this, it shouldn't be too hard. It's good because it's going to warm me up. Uh, I'm getting somewhere. Um, got most of the bulk of the uh, high spots off. Fortunately, I got a little bit opened up here. Um, There's a bit like a plane to get the last bit in, so I must have get it slightly out of square. But I made sure the leg was was lined up, and we'll just put a little bit of a, a bit of resin in that. That'll be fine. This is going to be a working bench. It's not uh, designed to be one of those beautiful masterpieces because it's got some hard work ahead of it. So we've just got a rusty old bit of metal here and uh, without putting too much force anywhere in particular I'm just going to rub this across the bench and it should mark high spots first Mostly flat, but I've still got some flattening to do. I'm just gonna inlay this end vise. This is the bit of wood I'm gonna use. I'm gonna have that in there. The vise will be even further in. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut that now with a circular saw. Right, got a end vise fitted, it's just an old one I had, nice one, record vise. Uh, it's not quite the right size, it could do with being bigger or being inlaid higher up, but I think it'll work. And then we're going to have this piece here, it's going to go in here, screwed in, clamped and everything. Then we'll have another piece on here, and that'll have uh, our dogs in it. There we go, tail vise fitted. It's great, I've never actually had a tail vise. I've never even used a tail vise. 
I'm not sure how much I'll use it, but it's going to be nice to have one. These come out, they're a bit damp, so I wanted them oversized so they will uh, shrink and be a bit better fit. And they can go all the way down, but not quite be lost in the hole. I've got three of them so I can triangulate between things, so I could have something clamped here or have something really wide on all three. But yeah, really nice. Closes up nice. Brilliant. So now I put main vice on the edge along there. Um, so I'm going to fit some, uh, some cross pieces on this uh, bench today. I didn't do that yet because I didn't know whether I wanted them like in line with the outside or on the inside. And I've decided now I want them on the inside. I don't want, if I'm here or leaning over, I don't want to be crashing my shin into it. So I'm going to put the long ones because this is the area I'm going to be working in here. And I could be getting quite close and I don't want to crash my legs into it. So on the long sides, the bit's going on the inside and on the end, it can go on the outside. Um, trouble is, I haven't really got suitable bits of wood for it. This is all I've got left. Um, so for the end pieces, because they don't need to be as strong, I'm going to use this smaller stuff. And for the long pieces, I'm going to use these. So I'm going to cut this one down to this size and these will be the two long bits. And then this will make the two um, short bits. Um, it'd be nice if I could do them all out of like this thickness, but uh, this, yeah, um, yeah, width. But um, I can't. I don't have the timber unless I go and buy some. But I'm not into that. I've got this stuff, so I'll make it work with this. It's just going to be a bit of a pain because I'm going to have to sort of join into it in a funny way. But yeah, it's fine. Let's do it. Right, just uh, notched out these two pieces and uh, they're about to go in, just with a screw. Uh, unfortunately this one is a tiny, tiny bit too short, but nothing to do about it. And these joins. Right, there we go, piece in, take a bit of glue on it, not the most fancy joinery in the world, but uh, I am really not bothered about that, all I care about is that it's uh, strong and functional, I mean it's nice if it looks nice too, but it's, um, it is a workbench at the end of the day and I use things like this and I'm quite hard on stuff so it certainly won't be the last workbench I ever build that's for sure Hey everyone, so we're really getting somewhere. I just used my last little few off cuts, so that piece going across there was an off cut, and then that was the off cut of this, and then because that's just screws into end grain, I put some little hardwood pieces under them. Um, it'd be nice to do it all with joinery, but the, my lengths of wood are um, too short uh, to really do it like that, so we've done it like that. It looks pretty nice. Um, now I'm just going to cut all these, I've got a load of this tongue and groove stuff, all scrap that I rescued, all of, everything on this table has been from scrap, so I'm now just going to process all this and then that will lay across and create our shelf at the bottom.
Vice is coming in handy already. Just got to notch one of these out for next to the leg. First two are in. So just go along fitting all them and we'll have a shelf. Right, that's our bottom bum. So for now, I'm going to have that like that and just store stuff under there as it is. But um, once I've moved it out and done all the necessary things and done the floor and everything, I'm going to put cabinets in here with drawers and I'm going to keep all my nice woodworking tools in there. Keep some away from any damp or anything. Okay, I'm almost there. Almost done. Vice is fitted. You might be wondering why I didn't put it closer to the leg because I wanted a bit of room that side. I think that'll be a good spot for it. Now this wood isn't exactly bone dry and it's not exactly in a particularly dry workspace. We're still a, a building site that's damp so this is probably going to move so I'm not going to spend too long getting it mega flat. Um, so I'm going to give it a rough sanding and uh, we'll be good because it and there we go she's all done it's not all sanded up all beautifully or anything like that no point in my opinion it's a workbench and yeah got two vices tail vice all I need to do now is uh, just put some dog holes along which I'll do next and then we'll be done very pleased lots of storage underneath it and total cost 50 pounds 50 pounds total cost everything in it is a uh, reclaimed wood from an extension friends extension so very pleased very pleased indeed and uh, morning everyone so I'm just gonna draw some dog holes for my hold fasts and the tail vice and the dogs um, so I spaced them out, the travel of the vise is that much, so I spaced them by that. There's two rows, I wish I'd have drilled this over here, but it shouldn't matter, I should still be able to clamp something between them quite easily. And I can always um, have two of them there if I wanted. But yeah, that was a bit of a mistake, but never mind. Uh, done two rows of them, one row there, one row there. I should be able to triangulate between them and reach all parts with, with the holdfast as well. Once it started, it's easy enough to do. Right, so one drilled, Just check it works. Put that there, Put that in there. Ha! Brilliant. Perfect. Just like that, the workbench is done. And uh, yeah, so a couple of little mistakes I made with it, but nothing too major. Should have had that a bit further over here, but that's not a problem. Um, I can still triangulate from the middle one quite easily, or I can use that one like that. I can clamp that there, work on that. And I can use these with, um, with a piece of wood so, uh, coming off of here to stop this from sliding. I should be able to clamp most stuff down. I might still do more rows, but I just don't want to drill loads of holes that I don't need at the minute. So for now, we're just going to go with that. Um, yeah, pretty happy. So I can go through all these different spots if I want to hold something, or hold something wider. Yeah, very pleased. I think it's going to be quite a universal workbench. Yeah, so that is it. All done. Total cost of 50 pounds, everything else I already had. That is going to be the end of the video. So, hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.
and the workbench is already put to use making a top for the singer sewing table <laughs> old fast and brilliant so i got that clamped up and glued because it had a crack down the middle yeah already putting it to work very very pleased <laughs>